I got to attend the Meteor Lake Tech Press workshop here at CES, and this video is sponsored by Intel for me to talk about my experience here with all of the new things that they've had to show off, including hands-on demos with their Meteor Lake notebooks that we got to test. And this was an exciting moment for me because ever since Meteor Lake got unveiled, I have been wanting to get my hands on these notebooks to actually test them out because they are the first tile-based SOC coming out from Intel. And with all of the hype and excitement that's going on with AI, one of the major things that Meteor Lake has is three AI engines using the CPU for sustained AI tasks, the GPU for high-performance AI tasks, and then the NPU, which is a new part of Meteor Lake, the neural processing unit that allows you to use it for power efficiency as you're trying to get those AI task workloads done and that was one of the great things that they allowed us to have at this event. It was not only them talking about how Meteor Lake can perform these tasks, but then allowing us to have over an hour and a half of hands-on workloads, testing out to see how effective these three AI engines could be, especially when they're used with the proper software. So with the hands-on demo, we got to see Stable Diffusion used in GIMP to actually generate an image on a thin and light laptop right before our eyes. We could also do photo processing in Lightroom, whether that was denoising or enhancing the raw details in certain photos with that actually utilizing one of the AI engines. Or for more mainstream uses, what you can find with a lot of AI use cases is the actual blurring of the background and things like Microsoft Teams calls or just using the Windows camera tool to implement a blur so that you can get rid of certain weird background features very easily using the NPU, which allows you to run it in the background and have prolonged battery life because the NPU is designed for the AI efficiency tasks. But I think what me and Kyler walked away with being the most impressed with was the interesting AI demo that they had where they used the use case of the NPU on the Meteor Lake laptop to segment out a song in Audacity. Now this is a recent update that's been developed by the creator of Audacity in combination with Intel's AI department so that they can utilize the NPU on the Meteor Lake chip. And within a matter of seconds, they were able to create the different stem layers of a given song, separating out the bass, the different instruments, the vocals, and also AI generating the lyrics to the song. And then within just a few minutes, they were able to create the karaoke version of a song by just muting the actual vocals. And you still have the lyrics playing on the screen. It's a very cool implementation for something that can be used for creative processes. Or if you wanted to sample something in the future, just being able to utilize an MPU on a thin and light meteor like laptop to get the specific drum track that you're looking for, this would really work out. So for all of this, Intel's partnering the hardware, bringing to the table with their meteor Lake tile SOC, but then also marrying that to the software stack, which is a very important thing that Intel did talk about a lot at this event, making sure that they are not just only developing the hardware, but also partnering with the software makers so that it becomes not just a cool idea, but actually really usable, effective, and something that's good for the average consumer. So the AI stuff was great. It's good to see practical implementations. We already implement AI into our workflow here at UFD Tech. Michael, our graphic designer right here, who's sitting right beside me trying not to clicky clack on his keyboard, he already uses AI to help generate some aspects of our thumbnails, which allow us to get more work done in a quicker manner. But then on top of that, we also got to see some graphical enhancements coming out of the new integrated GPU that is on Meteor Lake. Because one of the coolest things, in my opinion, is the fact that Meteor Lake actually has Intel Arc graphics inside, running whatever graphical application you can use it for. The Arc graphics allows you to use high acceleration for AI in case you want to do that, or they had some great demos showing off in a game like Ghost Runner 2, seeing that the new Arc graphics can typically run 70% faster over the 13th gen integrated graphics that were on the previous gen laptops. But then not only that, because of their use of XESS and super sampling within the game, they were able to get faster frame rate at the same wattage. They showed off comparisons of 28 watts versus 28 watts, getting sub 30 FPS on the previous 13th gen notebook and then getting over 75 FPS on the new notebook, but with XCSS turned on. But then again, one of the things I enjoyed the most was that this is a hands-on demo. So when I asked one of the Intel members to turn off XESS so that I could see the raw performance difference between Meteor Lake's Arc graphics and the previous 13th gen, it was still at that point just over double what it had been on the 13th gen in that specific benchmark at a locked 28 watts, which means that if you're going to be using your battery life on your laptop, you're going to get more longevity out of that because you're getting more performance at the same wattage. 
But it wasn't just the Meteor Lake notebook side of things that we got to check out. They actually had some other special little things that I was very excited about. Specifically, they showed off the new updates to Intel's application optimization feature, also known as Intel's APO. Intel's APO is an application that you download and you turn on. Previously, it only worked with 14th gen desktop chips, and it could potentially enhance your frame rates in a few different games. Now, this required a lot of manual testing, so they only brought it out to the i7 and the i9 on the 14th gen desktop. But the big update here is that it was going to be available now for 13th gen desktop chips, 12th gen desktop chips, but also for mobile chips. And they add in more games. So there's different games that you can get faster FPS by turning on the Intel APO toggle on the application. And they won't disclose how all of this secret sauce works, but one of the cool things is that it tweaks how the E cores are being utilized on the processor, plus a few other things. And that allows you to get faster frame rates within the games without having to go into the BIOS and manually tweak them yourselves. I did get to talk to one of the people behind Intel's APO to talk about a few behind the scenes things, and it's clear that they have a passion for this project, but it requires a lot of testing for them to make sure that when you click that toggle, it actually is delivering a better experience to you, the end user, and that is why they are now rolling it out to all these different chips so that you can use it. But then the last little thing that they had for us was that they brought down the MSI Claw, which is the new Meteor Lake based handheld. I've been talking about this thing ever since it got kind of rumored on this channel because I'm a huge fan of handhelds and to see Meteor Lake running in a gaming handheld that number one feels very good in the hands. I actually really enjoyed the ergonomics of it, but then also has the practicality that you've come to expect from other Windows handhelds. But now you get all of the benefits that come with Meteor Lake. So you have that three AI engine happening in the handheld. You have the new Intel Arc graphics allowing you to get the faster FPS in the video games, allowing you to play on the go and all of that being partnered with MSI to bring it to the market. And then this also coincide with the launch of their 14th gen laptop processors. So we were able to go see those over at the Newegg suite where they had plenty of notebooks coming out with performance up to the Intel i9-14900HX with 24 cores, 32 threads, boosting up to 5.8 gigahertz, allowing you to get faster enthusiast level performance than ever before in a laptop scenario, partnered with that discrete graphics, making sure that it's a powerhouse for when you need it. Michael, this guy over here got to play a lot of cyberpunk on that. It was your first time playing Cyberpunk, wasn't it? It actually was. It was very fun. It was. It was. I had a lot of fun. I think it was Phantom Liberty. It was, yes. It ran very smoothly. We didn't perform any benchmarks, but I'm excited to test these out when I can actually get them back in the office. But from my side, I am so excited for Meteor Lake. This has been one of the most anticipated architectural improvements coming out from Intel that I've been waiting for. The tile-based SOC actually changes how they design the chips. Meteor Lake is a big improvement. And then they left us with a little parting gift of the ZenBook 14 OLED, which this is the exact laptop that I was looking to pick up for my wife. I'd been waiting for this thing to go on sale for me to be able to buy it because it has the Intel Ultra 7 155H, which is 16 cores and 22 threads. It has 32 gigs of RAM and the Intel Arc graphics, all in a 14 inch thin and light that weighs 1.2 kilos. And the thing that a lot of people here at UFD Tech noticed when they first saw this was just how thin this thing actually is. And it's packing all of that hardware because of all the advancements that Meteor Lake has made, allowing to get all of that in here. And my wife loves to run all of her Chrome tabs open at once. She works like four different jobs, a lot of them volunteer, but having 32 gigs of RAM in a thin light is something that I've never seen before. And I'm excited to get this back to her once we're done here at CES. But I'm also excited for a lot of the stuff Intel showed off here at CES. We'll have more coverage coming out later in the week, but big thanks to Intel for sponsoring our CES coverage, allowing us to check out Meteor Lake hands-on at the Tech Press Workshop framework and allowing us to be able to see the rest of the cool stuff that they're bringing to the market. I'm excited for 2024 with Intel and getting my hands on a lot of these different things, bringing them into the office and testing them out, reviewing them, but it's going to be a good time. I'll see you all in the next CES coverage video.